Boom shot. Watch out, boom shot. You tell him to tell us a meek little way to a murmur now. So this one is a short shot. If you can't stop. Boom shot. Give thanks, Dada, every time. Honestly, when you took the stage at Hammerstein, I did not know it was you until the answer rhythm start play. And I said, wait. Is it possible? It is true, and the people have never seen it for a long time, and it's in action. So, what what can you say about that time? You said it was a, a hard time. Is there anything? Well, I was going through a rough time because I'm a manager, Mr. Fred Dana, the late great Mr. Fred Dana passed yeah. away. Okay. It was a time where I get a deal again with Arista Record to go out there and oh. a major label. Yeah. And we were working on a project to see the underground, which is our reggae market. Okay. I was working on something called Reggaematic. Ah, uh, yes, yes. In the process of working on this Reggaematic Diamond Full Star, Mr. Fred Dana passed away. I remember. It was so I just levicate that entire project to him, mm. put his photograph on the project, and it never went out. I returned the money to Arista because I didn't have an administrator. Mm -hmm. You don't want to end up with people, big money, millions of dollars without an administrator, you know? For real. Because you're going to owe what you can't pay for. Yeah, don't. You've learned a enough to know not to mess with those yeah, things. So yeah, so I returned yeah. the thing and now is my time. I must I call I out again and give I a next chance to the dance. Well, the dance has been needing you. The, the dance has been, you know, missing something special from you and... And I miss it too, Earl Boy, cause not even to miss it first because that is the end I live in. How I live in is, the way I live is music. music. Serious, seriously. If, if we can't live in the music, then we'll watch a man, mm -hmm. we die. No, don't even mention about that, but besides these live shows, have you been getting back into the recording booth again? Well, before I go in a recording booth, I have to get myself sharp. Okay. And I saw Rust to know that even Pepsi Cola can chip the dust off and get stuff. We can kick up grit and rumpus and chip off dust. I have a feeling so you're going to work I, it I, out. I, I, get, I get the caution band for going to thump out some of the rust. Okay, okay. For doing the journeys, I must, you know? Yeah, for real. For yeah. Real. So I, while I thump out dust with the caution band, guys go have to take precaution. <laughs> Serious thing. Yeah. So when you touch Sting, you said it's a different mission this time. It's not a clash thing. No, year. it's not a clash thing. Cause that clash with me and Ninja Man never finishing about. Still, I give respect to Ninja Man, a tough customer. You know, I train him. The problem was Ninja Man was rehearsing with the band for five days. Ah. When I reached Jamaica, it was a compulsion that he was doing a show in Ocho Reyes with the same band. Oh, okay. And the band was coming in the day of Sting. Mm. I didn't want to do a rehearsal on the day of the show that I was doing, so I say I running into it rough. One thing about the Jamaican crowd, you don't back out. Yeah. It's better you die and return from the dead. <laughs> we'll never back out on the people, you die forever. Yeah, yeah, well, no no one forget that clash. That's a legendary, yeah. legendary show. So when you reach now on the stage in Jamaica, this is the first time since Sashi? Since yeah, since Sashi. Sashi. Okay. Since uh, Sashi was a show I did there. The last show in Jamaica was Sashi. A great show also with, uh, who was it? Usher, Missy. Usher, Missy Elliott, Busta Rhyme. Some of my big heavy people um, yeah, exactly. from Jamaica. I believe Bounty Killer was on that show and somewhere I tapped up you them on yep. Jamaica. And that was right at the time I think you were dealing with Pharrell and the Neptune. All the time I was getting the deal and things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. The great Project Dana, the great Pass uh, away, so. Yeah, yeah. So the job bless him soul, you know. Have you worked out in your mind the first tune you're gonna touch when you take back the stage? I'm gonna take my call up caution. I'm gonna go guys, but I take my caution. You have the full thing planned and ready. Yeah, right? well, we don't even plan it, you know, we just call a shot. Uh, Including Merma, not for this blessing, I'll come and show a shot. This is Star Pedro, drop it, turn it, treat up. Lord have mercy. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait to be in the midst when the joy rings out across Jamaica that Cat is home again. I'm a forward. A long time with the out here and I'm more than now, we dig ourselves out I'm more. When I go around, go fling the stone off a blackboard. For all the people, them friends, and show them call it out. I tell them, you know, I'm not going to cuss my door. Besides doing a show and those types of things, what is your first stop when you touch Jamrock? What is your personal moves that you want to make? I want to touch in a high zone where I come up in the music. We are at Ocean 11, still Kingston 11. I look at school near Majestic School, a rock of ages, some say a copper and pen all age and now I hear them have a Roots FM radio there so I have to go go see this Roots FM car. 
Anything I care roots, you know, that I'm gonna go kick boots. <laughs> get together with the youths, I eat fruits. Yes, man. Yeah, yeah. So you're gonna take it right back where it all began. Forward, you know, where it's ready, a bamboo lawn, you know. All that thing I go up, you know, and from dust to dawn. I used to hold a girl and wind around a bamboo lawn. <laughs> Jeans that runs in it for and down. Before we climb on the leather figure, put up the horn. Well, if I think you know, the dance and it a go on. Go on, it a go on. Now stop go on. You are one of the first dance artists to incorporate his own label and take control of his own business. How important was that for your career? Don't let them trick me out them and keep talking about dance hall. That is a miseducation. We have to straighten out that. Okay. Respect for I and I getting the influence from some of the people who is producer before I and I. I will learn that from Gregory Isaac. Uh, People like Barrington Levy, Tyan and them man used to get a one rhythm and walk with it on our arm, go to Tubby's mm. and know to vice yourself. Mm. Still, only thing we were playing in dance hall, what dance hall is, there are venues. Okay. We play so many dance hall in the parishes. Okay. And what we were playing in the dance hall is reggae music. A reggae music where them want to know that make picture and, and if we play it from the whole night, I'll be a go play it till morning light. Reggae music, I don't want to know it, make you dance. <laughs> in a <the> dance <laughs> chant, Don Angelo, so a reggae music with a play in a dance hall. Gotcha. So, what happens? Some people kind of have it in a miseducated way where they say dance hall music. There was no difference in the music. Called the roughest music we ever play in a dance hall. A great part of the reggae music will live today. Mm. When you play a man like Philip Fraser, I ah, will never let you go. Mm. I will never let go. Even though I try. Ah, 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 ah. And she keep on, keep on telling me those dreadful lies, can't you see? Psh. At them tune that Michael Prophet will tell us, man, to man is so unjust. Sometimes we don't even know. I tough his part I mash up dance hall with that yeah. foundation. So, so that yeah. is what we use rum the whole I dance all them. Solidify reggae music from man like Barrington Levy. Mm -hmm. Your honor, please I want a quick divorce. Girl, I'm loving in a backward force. Please, Mister, just don't let me wait. I want this thing I cut off and me right away. At them two, they will lick up, and I tough part of reggae that will live, mm. never die. Mm. Mm. So them can't come around and we don't get Did you ever select a sound? Cause you have a selector mind. You can't have two on. I play the, I play the, I play the whole of the number one sound there. Okay. Whole of the number one sound. So as a DJ, you select record same way. Yeah. I used to work for Kilimanjaro. Every time we have a clash, okay. I personally have to go to the studio to make the songs then. Okay. Especially when we have a tournament, we call it Clash Tournament. That I have to get the tune ready for the resident fight. We have a knock up boy if he's the president in this war. I watch every time we tell the government. See, serious lyrics that. Yeah, man. Sound, sound dead in the arena. Man. You know what I'm talking about? Murder a long time for 19 rounds. So, so not play with sound thing. So we carry the song up there, up there, up there till it reach all up in London. Mm. Sir Coxon, we are chatting with Mr. Demos and, Co and Saxon. So we yep. come here, come build all these high fine in Brooklyn, sound yep. killer. Yeah, yeah. Then we forward to show business with live band. Yep. Now we left that level. We have to work with the band. Because when you take it to the band level, you need the showmanship and to keep the music strong. After you conquer the reggae music to all these venues. Yeah. You have to come live it. With the band. Yeah. The only way to orchestrate it is with the band. Right. right. If you're not orchestrated with a band, then you run second. Yeah, for real. After you chump to the whole I dance all then. A pound reggae music. Mm. You become an household name within it, show business. You have to take it to showmanship. And showmanship is working live on stage with a band. If you can't perform with the band, then you don't reach a level of showmanship. And showmanship is where the music live. Right, right. In the heights of heights of heights. No. Yes, yes. That's a whole different art form than chat and sound yep. system. I, yeah. I orchestrative. Yeah, yeah. The music live. Absolutely. Since the last time we had a chance to reason, we lost a soldier named Heavy D. And uh, you and him did some great work together over the years. Yeah, man, you come help propound a reggae thing, man. Yeah, yeah. And the whole lighting, they were in number one. Mm. 
Mm. We are the great dance. We call it master reggae. Top, top, top. At the top, Frankie Paul. Yes. Of big and ready in the same big and Yeah, ready. man. Mm. And uh, them no worry we and all them things. Crazy tunes. Crazy yeah, tunes. So, well, I say God bless him soul, because a tough soldier. At the first big every man ever say move light. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. He also gave a, a 45 of yours to Salam Remy, dance in New York. You heard the story. Yeah. He gave the 45 to Salam say, I think something could be made off of this record. And then Nas come make a big hip hop record off of the sample of dance in New York. Well, Evie is a man who has insight of the thing. You know, him see it before it happened, can improve that to I. You know, I never know every day. Say we know I. So I said to I, Chucky and I for about three years straight. I is, his f I is one of his favorite performer in reggae. Plus Brigadier Jerry, and there was somebody else he mentioned. He has good taste. Yeah, and him said he wanted to do something with reggae music. Still at the time I didn't know what rap is, mm. except for two tunes that it in Jamaica. It, up, it be the up and you don't stop rap to the bang bang boogie the beat. Shrill gang. Yeah, and then there was another one. Everybody watch Kung Fu fighting. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Them kicks is fast like. You understand? Yeah, and yeah. Them two things it there. So I was letting him know. I don't know nothing about this rap. So the guy following me for three years. So since we come from Jamaica, we're 50 cent a stick and a dollar a quarter. Yeah, yeah. That was a jar of marijuana. Yeah, for real. So when he keep talking about rap, 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 I thought he was talking about it, rapping a jar of weed. Mm, so mm. when I was tired of what he talking about, because I couldn't get the message across, I said, why the fuck you don't give me some of what you rap so like I smoke the thing and you can tell me <laughs> the fucking thing. I tell you everything is great. <laughs> so then one of every side kicks and no, 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 not like that. Not, he don't mean smoking. What you guy call DJing here in the States, we call it rap. I said, oh, fuck. I get what you're saying now. So that's the time I told him that the only two songs I'm feel familiar with yeah, yeah. from their time is Kung Fu Fighting and, and the, the, Sugar Hill the Sugar Hill Gang. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even know the, the, the name of the artist. Yeah, it's called I know Rapper's the Delight, Sugar yeah. Hill Gang. Yeah. I, I, I know the song. Yeah. So, Evie said, wanted to do a song on the regular. I said, Evie, I don't know how to pick a rhythm track for you since you're a hip-hop artist. Why don't you do this? Pick the track you like. Yeah. And we get this thing done. Yeah, yeah. So he went for Winston Riley Techniques, number one song. Mm. I'm in the mood for love. And I just sent for Frankie Paul. I said, Frankie Paul, hold this melody together. So we're going to do something with Big Great every day. Bam Bam, number one in three weeks. A classic, classic piece of music. Yeah. Now you were also the the first one to have a Biggie Smalls record with yourself. Well, that, big your that was the next majestic thing. Yeah, yeah. Because I signed to the major label. Okay. And they wanted to market hip hop with reggae, which at the same time I didn't have any full insight of. Still, I don't have anything against hip hop. They are a culture and a nice road. So they run through a whole lot of meeting before it went on the road. And um, they were saying they wasn't giving all these venues to hip hop for the tour to happen. And a lot of record company get, came together. Yeah. And we went to some meeting and they said they are giving the venues to reggae. If reggae is not on the bill, there's no tour going on. Right. So they asked us how we feel about this. Right. We said we don't have any problem. We see these people coming out of broken homes like some of us coming out of the ghetto. They call their thing projects here the same thing we call housing scheme in Jamaica. Mm. So we didn't have any problem rubbing shoulder together, bringing the wheel forward, and it happened there. We, they were remixing reggae with hip hop. They said it was a marketing strategy, and we were at the major label. Now you get a job, you don't tell the company how to market the thing to make the music sell. Yeah, for real. So Third Eye, which was a group with Biggie Small, Jesse West, Puff Daddy. Yeah. They just didn't end up doing the remix, they end up so excited about the record, it was a number one hit already at the four corner of the earth. They just applied yourself to the work. And I myself, I am not into cutting people short or cutting people out. Right. So I just let it roll. It was one of the biggest songs that they ever see to the fullest time in reggae and across hip hop. And today, Puffy is what Puffy is, great. He's got a big billboard in Times Square. Yeah, yeah but he need to check for some of them Jamaican youth and put some money in them pocket and sign some Jamaican youth and drop some of them million years in them pocket because he must remember that reggae take him off and put him in a rocket. And that'll never stop it. So I spec it, you know. 
Word to Puffy on that. Bless up my 